Hello there, my name's Sue Shardlay. I'm the Developer Community Manager here at Redis. Thanks so much for joining us today for day, what day are we today? Day five of uh, DevSember. So DevSember is our little festival of really cool Redis stuff that we're running between uh, the 1st and the 24th of December this year, Monday to Friday, myself, my colleagues, Justin Castilla and Simon Prickett are delivering a daily, very short, bite-sized live stream, Monday to Friday, because that's when our work week is. And on Saturday and Sunday, we are giving you a little mini challenge, no competition, no pressure, just to see what you know about Redis and what you can do with it. Um, so yeah, we'll let you know what's coming up for this weekend's challenge on Friday. Um, but you can check out last weekend's challenge. It's on uh, GitHub. If you go to developer.redis.com slash DevSember, I'll show you what that looks like now. You can find everything uh, you need to know about this. Um, you'll find a schedule on there. I currently have too many windows open, so I'm finding it quite difficult to scroll. You'll find our schedule on there and all the recordings of the streams we have already done so what we're doing is we're only revealing the streams on a day by day basis so you'll have to come and check back on our website or um, subscribe to us on youtube or follow us on twitch to get a notification when we go live so because simon and i are based in the uk and justin is based in california they are going to be all different times of the day because we want to make sure that folks have the best chance of catching us live but like i said the recordings are all up on YouTube. Um, I am trying to be here every day, but as you can probably hear from my voice, I'm very full of the cold at the moment. So luckily it's not COVID, it's just the cold, but I am struggling a little bit. So I'm really grateful to Simon and Justin for doing it um, without me for the last couple of days. Thanks so much to you good people for doing that. Um, so one thing I want to mention, actually, uh, before I uh, bring Justin on, was that I had a really nice interaction with somebody on LinkedIn today who has been looking at our videos and they asked me, are we going to be covering Redis JSON and Redis Search? Because they're really interested in those two things. And so while we are revealing the uh, schedule day by day, I can confirm that, yes, at some point on or before the 24th of December, we will be covering Redis JSON and Redis Search in two separate sessions. So do please stay tuned if you're really interested in those topics. But we're also going to cover all sorts of things. So for example, um, Bloom, we're going to be looking at Hyperloglog, uh, we're going to be looking at Geo, and we also have some brand new, and when I say brand new, I mean brand new, like literally like the plastic has still hasn't been taken off them by some people. Um, some brand new Redis uh, clients for you good people who program in Java, JavaScript, um, .NET, or Python. So if you tuned in yesterday, you would have seen Simon demonstrate the Python one. And we've got all the other subject matter experts coming to you live here on Twitch on, or YouTube between now and the 24th of December. So, um, yeah, if you are interested in Redis JSON and Redis Search, we do have a course on Redis Search already on uh, Redis University, free course for you if you want to get a certificate in that. So that's at uh, university.redis.com. And if you're interested in Redis JSON, we're currently developing that course. It's going to be brand new early next year. If you go to university.redis.com, you can register your interest in that and you will be amongst the first to know when that course is available. So that's all my advertising out of the way. Today I'm working with Justin. Justin is going to be talking to us all about big O notation. Let's so let's bring Justin into the mix now. Hi Justin, how are you today? Good, good. How are you? I'm not bad, thanks. I'm so glad. Like I actually feel bad that uh, we've never met in person and we don't work together together. But on this occasion, because I'm so full of germs, I'm really pleased that we're not next to each other. I'm giving you all my germs. So I guess <laughs> that, that is not possible over the, the medium of streaming. So you're going to be talking to us a bit about big O notation. And I know this is a topic that strikes fear into the hearts of a lot of folks because everybody comes into tech 
from a different direction and not everybody covers this in whatever tuition they were given or whatever self-learning they did so um we have covered this a few times we covered it in ru 101 as well but it's always good to get a little reminder so i'm really grateful that you've chosen to do this topic today yeah this is a I, in my data structures and algorithms class in, in university, it was, uh, it was very daunting and it was quite painful. Um, uh, but after a while, it just, I started, you know, dreaming in big O notation and performance analysis. Um, so I wanted to distill that and remove the teeth and make it a little bit more easy to understand, hopefully, or at least like, you know, get us start thinking about performance um, and fortunately, we won't have to do any uh, massive unrolling of of mathematics. So that's good. That's very good. I promise. No heavy math. Good, good. Glad to hear it. Yeah, go for it. I've, I think I've used up enough of your time already. You've only got 15, 20 minutes, but please don't feel rushed. Go for it. Cool, cool. All right. Well, uh, so big O notation. Let's Let's say what it is and what it isn't. Big O notation is a way for us to um, identify um, the performance of an algorithm or a transaction or an action. Um, in the scope of Redis, it would be um, the performance of us accessing or writing data um, via commands that are already established. And um, the performance of a combination of those commands. So searching for um, you know, a key within our database or traversing a list data type within our database or taking different, different keys and comparing them with you know, intersections with sets or sorted sets, things like that. So what it isn't, this is very important, what it isn't is an analysis of time. So um, I'm not gonna run you know, I'm not going to analyze, uh, you know, some of my um, some of my commands and say, oh, this is definitely going to take 0.7 milliseconds. It doesn't work that way. Um, we don't really think of, of wall time or clock time. We think of performance and runtime. So um, times always change uh, as far as how long in, in milliseconds it'll take a CPU to do a transaction. Uh, what we actually care about is uh, the fact that a CPU is using cycles to do this one action. So um, let's actually start looking at some visuals. I'm gonna use uh, a list to start off with to sort of think about um, big O performance analysis. And I wanna start looking at the first one that, we'll, uh, that, that a lot of people see, and then it's in a lot of our commands is um, O of one. Now, O of one is basically constant time, which is as efficient as it gets. It's something, it's an action that you can do that uh, will always take the same amount of time. So you can think of this as um, dropping a stone onto the ground on earth. The gravity, if you're, if you're four feet above the ground and you drop it to the ground, it's always gonna take the same amount of time um, it's not going to change. Gravity is not going to change on Earth, hopefully. Um, pulling a card from the top of the deck. You always know where the card is on the top of the deck. So it's always going to be there. Uh, it doesn't matter what the face is on the card, but you're always going to do that. Um, snapping your fingers. You can't snap slowly, but you can always snap your fingers. It's going to take a constant time. Um and there's a bunch of different analogies we can use. Um, and my my biggest recommendation is thinking of one that works with you, fact checking it with a friend or coworker, um, and then you'll start getting to feel like what constant time is. It always takes a specified amount of compute time. So one example that I really like of constant time is with a list or an array. Um, most operating systems keep a pointer or a location handy in their minds where the beginning and the end of a list is. Um, it's just by the nature of computer science, we access the beginning and the end of a list more often than not. So also we need to actually know the beginning and ending of a Redis list because uh, under the hood, that's how we track uh, a list. Uh, so always looking at the 
front of a list, the zero index is going to be constant time. So um, as an example on these slides, you'll see the uh, zero index and the seven index, the front and the back of the list. L push uh, will always be a constant time action because we always know where that front of the list is. L pop or R pop or L pop, if we're just popping one um, element onto the list or off of the list, uh, we'll always know where the, the ending or the beginning of that list is. So we don't have to search for it. Searching or traversing through a list is where you get larger than constant time because then you actually have to spend time and, and resources having the computer go through your list. So O of one, constant time, super fast, that's what you, you're, you're ideally going for, is going to be, in this example, the beginning or the ending of a list or anywhere where you know exactly where something is, something very handy. <clears throat> if in my um, utility drawer, uh, people usually have a drunk drawer, or utility drawer. I have, you know, uh, a certain hex key that I need to use to, you know, build my IKEA furniture. I don't know where it is. I have to go through my drawer. That's going to take more than constant time. But for my hammer, I have my hammer hanging up in my workshop, so I know exactly where it is. So it's only going to take one amount of effort to actually pull it up. So that's another analogy. So again, whatever works for you best. Um, so that's constant time. Now this is linear time. Linear time isn't that much scarier, but it does uh, require a little bit more consideration. Now an example of a linear um, time uh, action or command would be L range. So L range, uh, if you remember within a list gives us a specified amount of the list back to us. So if I want to call L range on a list, I'll tell it where to start and where to end. And I want to see that many uh, elements within that list. So N means however many elements we have to traverse or bring back. So if I wanted to just get the first element of a list back with L range, that would be constant time just the first element, because it knows exactly where the first element is, remember? So that would be O of one. But if it, you want more than one, it would be O of N. Now, if you wanted two elements back, that would be O of two technically, but we cannot guarantee however many elements somebody would want back. It could be two, it could be four, it could be 40,000, it could be 400,000. So all of those numbers, greater than one, we just consider N because we're going to be using big O notation with these commands more often automatically without us actually paying attention to it. So it's going to perform operations on small lists and large lists. So O of N can be friendly. It can be very small. It could be up to two or starting at two, but then it can go all the way up to two million or two billion. So you need to be very thoughtful about these commands, what are they going to be traversing over? So this is a very simple, uh, you know, example of L of N, linear time. And then we can actually increase it. So previously it was O of two, now it's O of five, because now we're going through more elements. And you actually have to be kind of thoughtful about this because there are commands that we consider dangerous. You might've heard me talk about dangerous commands. Uh, one of the more dangerous ones is keys. Keys just returns keys from the database. You can give it a pattern and it will search your entire database for that pattern and give it back to you. But there's that, that little subtle word, search entire database, or I guess phrase, search the entire database. So that's a, if you could have a lot of keys in your database, it's going to go through every single one looking and comparing of your, your pattern. So if you have you know, a Redis database of 2 billion keys, you know, this massive, massive enterprise instance up and running, and you run keys, that's going to stop everybody else from looking at the database while you go through the database and like look for a specific key. So that means that you're going to be running through all of them. So that's the worst case scenario of O of N, where N is the amount of keys you have. So that's why we say be careful with keys use something that won't 
bite off the entire database, more something like scan, where you can say, look, but only take like 10 or 50 or 100 at a time. So it's not going to actually stop your database. So this is O of N, and you'll see the commands um, O of N through most of our, um, our Redis commands. You just need to be uh, you know, very cognizant of what you're using in combinations, just so you know that you're not going to be traversing your entire database. Uh, another example that you'll see is uh, O of S plus N. So S is going to be the offset of where we want to uh, traverse. It still counts as a computation. So it's going to be considered within our computational analysis. So again, with L range, um, in this instance, I'm wanting to get indexes three through five but I don't want to get 0, 1, and 2. So my offset is going to be 3. S is 3. And then N is going to be three elements back. So O of S plus N is going to be O of 3 plus 3. So O of 6. So it's not the worst thing in the world in this little instance, but it still requires some thought. If you're going to do a large offset, you're going to be traversing that offset amount of elements, and that's going to cost you in your big O analysis. So again, um, just think about what you're doing. Uh, write it out. You know, you don't have to do any huge algebraic or calculate, you know, whole wall of, of, of mathematics. You just need to think about it a little bit and give yourself some examples of how long it would take. So now let's go lastly into something that's pretty fun and pretty interesting. This is going to be uh, with sets and sorted sets, uh, where you have multiple keys and you're going to be interacting those keys together. Um, and sets are, uh, just as a recap, they are unique collections of elements. So with a list, you can have multiple instances of the same number or the same string. But with sets, you can only have unique uh collection. So I can, in a list, I can have one, two, two, three, four for my list. For a set, I can only have one, two, three, four. I can't have duplicates. Um, and you'll see why uh, later on. But um, in this in this video, I just want to cover, you know, uh, the common uh, big O notations that you'll see within Redis commands. And this is one that I kind of like, O of N times M. Um, and the, the multiplication might be a little scary, but it's, it's not. It's really that, it's not that bad. Um, N represents the cardinality of the first set that you're using in, uh, in this case, the S inter command, which is an intersection of sets. So among multiple sets, the first cardinality, the, the number of unique elements in a set is going to be considered the N. And then M is the number of sets that you're going to intersect. So N is the cardinality of the first set. M is the total number of sets that you're going to be interacting with. So let's get some visuals. Here we go. So we have three sets. Uh, set A is 0, 1, 2, 3. Notice that there's no duplicates. Set B is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Notice there's no duplicates in B. Now, A and B are two different keys, two different two different pieces of data. So they might share some similarities, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, a, um, a single set can only have unique elements within itself. And then we'll look at uh, set C. It's all uh, odd numbers, including zero from one to 17. So these are three different sets. So um, going back, let's look at this again. N represents the cardinality of the first set. And then M is the number of sets to intersect. So if I wanted to intersect all three of these sets, that would make my M three. And then when I call the S inter command, the first, um, the first set that I'm going to be calling in my, in my arguments is going to be the uh, N, uh, the cardinality is gonna be N. So let's look at an example. Let's say I'm calling S inter a, B, C. I'm taking, uh, I'm, I want to find the intersection of numbers between set A, then set B, then set C. 
So N is the cardinality of the first set. Uh, set A has four unique elements in my set. So I'm going to use the number four. M is the total number of, uh, sorry, uh, four, uh, sorry. M is the total number of sets that I'm uh, calling S intersection on. So in this case, it's going to be four times three. So it's going to be 12. So there's going to be 12 uh, computational interactions going on uh, with this command. Now it's interesting because watch what happens when I actually call s enter with a different order of sets that I'm calling. So let, instead of doing s enter ABC, now I'm calling s enter CBA. Now C, the cardinality of C is going to be nine. There's nine unique elements in C. So instead of being four, now it's nine because we're gonna be comparing those nine elements among all three sets. They're still gonna give me the exact same result, which is gonna be zero. But notice now that if I start with C, the uh, computational cost is gonna be 27. 27 is more than double than 12. So that's pretty interesting. Um, still doing the exact same thing. There's no difference under the hood except for what you're starting with. So this is a kind of cool, kind of subtle, kind of interesting um, quirk about a set intersection, a set union and set difference. Um, but I wanted to point that out because you will see this as an example uh, using you know, Redis commands. So um, is this going to be a problem? No, not really. When you're calling notation, uh, when you're calling uh, intersections like this with the clients and whatnot, you'll want to find the first uh, set as the smallest cardinality and then use that first. You want to put them in order. So that's not a big problem. And I'll give you a huge speed up. So I just wanted to point this out. Um, so all of these, this O of N times M and then uh, S plus N plus just N. And of course, O of one, these can all be seen um, within our Redis commands page. And I cannot, I cannot just, you know, sing the accolades of this command page. I read this and not because I work for Redis, just because it's really well written. And it also mirrors a lot of the activities of the data structures underlying, like lists, strings, sets, sorted sets, things like that. So uh, within every single uh, command page for every, you know, specific, um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong, uh, let me just take one second here. I'm looking at the wrong command page. Here we go. Let's look at L push. There we go. Um, at the top, you'll always see the time complexity and a little bit of an explainer why. So this L push, which is a constant time, it says O of one for each element added. So O of N to add N elements when the command is called with multiple arguments. So if I'm just adding one element with L push, it'll just take one computational cost. Um, but if I add more than one, as you can see with, you know, it takes multiple elements, it'll be of O of N. If we look at L pop, O of N, where N is the number of elements returned. But if you do L pop with just one, uh, one element, it'll just give you O of one. And, you know, let's, uh, let's look at some of the other more, um, complex one. I'll look at sets and then we can look at S enter. And here you go. You see it's O of N times M worst case where N is the cardinality of the smallest set and M is a number of sets. So all of these commands, you can sort of like shop and browse through and find which ones are the, you know, might be the most uh, fast for you. The, they'll work the best. Um, S add uh, when you're adding an element to a set is O of one for each element. Again, so you could add multiple, they're very addicts, so you can add multiple uh, members to your set, but if you're adding just one, it's just a constant time addition. So lots of stuff to think about, um, but it's not too scary. Uh, big O can get pretty big uh, as far as like, you know, the timings and stuff like that. Lots of algorithms such as sorting and search can get uh, interesting, like O of log of N or O of N log N or you can get really big, like O of N squared, or um, you know O of N, N, or N to the M, and get exponentially. Um, 
we don't really deal with that here in Redis because we like to be very fast. So O of N, O of 1, O of S plus N, or O of N plus M, or N times M. Those are the things that you'll most likely want to see uh, within your commands, and those are the ones that we actually provide with our commands. So that's big O. Um, hopefully that helps. Uh, you can always write, you know, simple code of traversing lists and, and things like that. Just kind of check your understanding and see the performance of your commands. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem if you just, you know, give you plenty of practice. So that's big O. Thank you very much for watching. I know that might've been a little weird, but you know, always, always, you know, check back, check other resources. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us on Twitter. My handle down boop, there is at Just Castilla. Or you can ask us on our Discord channel. Um, or if you're seeing this on our syndicated YouTube video, just drop a, you know, drop a comment and we're more than happy to answer for you. Okay, cool. Well, thank you to Suze uh, in the background for introdu introducing me. Uh, thank you, Simon, for pulling the levers in the background. And uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.